Yay! All right, it's November. Time for our November challenge. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a fun one because I don't know what it's going to be. We are going to do a little bit of random generation here. So we pick some categories, um, and we're going to use a little spinner to determine. So we have two spinners set up. We're going to have set them both going, and whatever they land on, that's what I'm going to sculpt, and that's what you guys are going to sculpt. For November, so it'd be kind of exciting. Yeah. So, Henry, you have the setters spinners set up. I have the spinners. First one we're going to run is the art type spinner. All right, you want to run down the categories real quick for the studio audience? Uh, yeah, I'll read them as they spin around here: Renaissance, Baroque, French Nouveau, Surrealism, Expressionism, Art Deco, Gothic, Byzantine, Googie, Gucci, and. Guji, and we're back to Renaissance. Yeah, Guji is a style of architecture you see in LA. It's that sort of retro futuristic kind of, you know, Cinerama Dome type. Uh, think of the LA airport, that restaurant that never seems to be open, <laughs> but looks really <laughs> cool. That's kind of classic Guji style. So, or the Las Vegas sign, I think, counts. Okay. Yeah, so it's that style. So it's, it's definitely not like gothic or renaissance uh so it's a nice little style so that, okay that's the first spinner that's the first spinner and what's the second Should spinner I... these are subjects so we've got dragonfly phoenix centaur owl griffin elephant spaceman seahorse and frog Frog. yeah all right henry you're gonna be the master spinner okay i'm gonna do the art style first and go need sound uh, Googie. All right. I'm glad I explained it. Then. <laughs> right. <laughs> I really thought it was going to be Byzantine, but it is. Say it again. Guji. Guji. If you Google it, Google will give you a uh, list a bunch of things saying Google because it assumes you spelled it wrong. Right. It just <laughs> thinks you spelled it wrong. You're certainly you're talking about us, right? You don't want an art style. Yep. All right. Let's let's see what sort of a Guji thing you're going to make. There you go. Uh, ow, Griffin, Elephant, Spaceman, Seahorse, 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 a Guji Seahorse. Guji Seahorse. <laughs> that's kind of going to be, all right, that's going to be an interesting challenge. <laughs> but right. it is the, the lords of randomness that have decided this, and that's what we're going to do, man. I'm going to commit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. A Guji seahorse. Actually, Henry and I were just browsing the old internet there, looking for some reference. Uh, there's some really nice uh, flamingos that are done in the Guji style, that you know, from like Las Vegas and that kind of stuff. It's kind of a nice sort of inspiration. Um, but we'll see how this goes. Uh, let me start with blocking out a very basic seahorse form. So let me turn off perspective. I'm going to go to the good old sea modeler here. And well, actually, let's go back here and get ourselves a plane. I'm going to do a polycube. That's fine. And I'm just going to set this down to zero divisions. And let's go back to Z modeler. And I'm going to get my seahorse reference on the other screen here. So we've got, let's go over here. I'm going to hold the space bar and make sure that my move action is, I like to do infinite depth. You could also do infinite Z, but infinite depth is nice because it's based on the camera angle. So I'm going to start creating a spiral. And as you guys have no doubt learned from many of Tomas's videos and mine as well that we really like to when we're blocking something out like this we really want to make sure that we have an edge flow that goes all the way around as opposed to doing like you know you know this kind of thing or if you want to do a spiral you want to do this this is where we want to avoid this because if I wanted to add an edge loop you see how it's not following down there so just want to do a quick review there but we have a little spiral here uh, for the tail I'm going to start with that. Whoops. And I think 
I'm gonna do like an earring. I could be using my Cintiq. I don't know how many times I accidentally forget that I'm using a Cintiq and start working with a mouse. It's really very silly. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> I would have thought you'd broken yourself of that habit. I years it's, ago. It still ha there's certain things in ZBrush that I still do with a mouse. Sometimes Z modeler. I think it's because I've been modeling in Maya for so many years, and I'm just used to mm -hmm. using a mouse that way. Like I really don't like using a Cintiq tablet when I'm in Maya. But honestly, I don't model as much in Maya as I do as I used to. Uh, because Who it? well, you know, Z modeler finally got to the point where it's like, okay, this is a real polygon modeler, and um, it has some nice features. Uh, one of my favorite is the um, the edge extrude because that kind of took the place of having to do quad draw in Maya when we did retopology. So if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry about it. <laughs> so now we're going to do the head. Alright, I'm probably going overboard. Let's undo that. That's more than I need. And just do this. And you're just adding those edge loops to control where you have more geometry? Yeah, I'm trying to do a balance between having even spaced geometry. Like I wouldn't want to go in here and add all kinds of geometry right there and then less over here. Now that's the opposite of the way you would traditionally do visual effects uh, topology. So visual effects topology, you, you want to kind of put the edge loops where you need it. But when we're sculpting, and we just want to have a nice even topology all the way around so that if I'm adding detail right here and I continue to add detail um, as I subdivide it, I don't have to necessarily worry about there being a huge difference in the amount of geometry between here and here. There might be some. I mean, you could also use um, Dynamesh to achieve kind of the same thing. Uh, but the nice thing about having uh, topology like this where our base mesh is so low is that we have the advantage of being able to go up and down levels of subdivision which makes it easier to smooth things out. This gives us more flexibility than Dynamesh. So Dynamesh has an even topology but you, you don't have the ability to do this kind of thing. Um, and that comes in really important when you start to smooth things out and that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? But you know the, yep. the great thing about ZBrush is you can always go back and forth. You're never locked into anything. It's there's always flexibility, and that's that's the other reason um, why it's such a great tool. So I'm looking at some of the Guji reference here, and. You know, like, uh, let's see. A Norm's diner sign is a good example. This kind of repeating pattern of these triangles or these diamonds. And I'm looking at some of the other clip art. I don't know if we're actually getting in trouble for showing this because it's just clip art. You know, when you can find it in Google image search. But, um, I mean, this right here, we have this spiral kind of thing in our seahorse. And then we also have repeating patterns. So I'm wondering if we could bring in some of this kind of stuff a little bit more. It almost sounds like an insert mesh brush kind of deal. Let's try this. Okay. At the very least, this will be educational, if, even if it doesn't work. So I'm going to go into Illustrator real quick. So in Illustrator, I spent a little bit of time just making some mid-century kind of Guji style stuff it's all vector art so these are all outlines made with curves and you can buy or you can download or find libraries of this stuff online uh, if you don't have the time to make it yourself uh, we're going to include this though as a download so you can have this as well so you can practice with it um, but what you want to do is select one of these guys here and choose you know file export selection this is a little checked here you can see i already exported a bunch of these so it just saves them in memory for whatever reason but you know, select a folder where you want to export it. Make sure it's in the SVG format and then export assets. So I've already done this. So let's go back to ZBrush. 
and choose my little star here and I'm going to go into Z plugin text 3D and vector shapes and I'm going to choose new SVG and let's just select one of these guys here 37 I wish I gave you a proper uh, preview there because I'm kind of guessing uh, let's do another one and maybe like one more Thir lucky 13 there we go that's a nice one okay so these are great because they're low polygon count or low point count it's only 72 points the only problem is um, if I wanted to incorporate this say into my seahorse and then maybe subdivide it and sculpt on it like this uh, it's going to be kind of a pain. What I want to do is I want to create a library, something I can use in a lot of different tools or a lot of different projects. Maybe spending a few minutes now kind of remeshing this and making the topology a little bit more sculpting friendly is not a bad idea. Because if I control D to subdivide this, this is what we get. And that's that's really nasty. That's not going to be fun to sculpt at all. So let's go back in time here. I'm going to control click on this undo slider to store that history state. And then uh, play a little bit with uh, Z meshing. Sometimes, you know, what I'll do is this is going to take a little bit of playing around to get it right. So if I just hit Z remesher with adaptive on, and let's turn on detect edges, we get that. It's now 4,700 points. It's not too bad. I mean, this is kind of ugly right there. So ZBrush is struggling to resolve this. So what I might do is undo that. Let's do a quick Dynamesh first and then Z remesh the Dynamesh. Sometimes that can fix a few problems. So I'm just going to up the resolution here. You could also use Gizmo. I could go in here, Gizmo, remesh by Dynamesh, and select, I don't know, doesn't have to be too much, 24,000. Yeah, that works good enough. Or you could use this Dynamesh. Doesn't really matter. Just trying to find a topology that's going to be easier to Z remesh. So it's Dynamesh to Z remesh. So I'll choose Accept. And now it's 22,000 points. Now let's try Z remesh. Let's see, it's a little bit better. Let's try turning off detect edges. That's actually a little bit better. Not quite as wobbly. Remember we did store that history state so it can always do project history. Straighten that up a little bit. And now I'm gonna set my Z remesh to half and just do this a few times and see how low I can get it. I mean, ideally I like to get this below a thousand points. You can do project history again. Well, maybe a little bit of cleanup here, but again, remember this has to look good, you know, from far away like that. And also if I get this down to a low polygon count, now if I subdivide it, it's gonna be a little bit easier to work with. Like this is still nasty, but you know another trick you can do. Uh, so I'm at higher subdivision level, hold control and shift. I'm going to choose clip rect and just go in here and do like that. Now it's nice and flat and at low subdivision level. That's not too bad, right? Even delete higher levels of subdivision. And then, you know, what I'll do is I'll just do this to a bunch of them. So uh, I created a tool and we're going to share this with you guys. It's called Guji Symbols. And it's got no less than 51 fabulous little mid-century designs you can play with. They've already been remeshed and a fairly low polygon count. So that'll be fun to, to work with. And what you can do with this is you can select this and then go into brush and choose uh, create insert multi-mesh. And this will create an insert br mesh brush from all 51 symbols. So now if I select one of these and zoink, or this one, lunk, or this one, I got a little library. Pretty cool. So let's see how we can incorporate this into the seahorse design and see if we can make it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, so I have some ideas I wanna play with here. So. Rather than being so literal with a three-dimensional representation of a seahorse, I might do more of like an outline because I think that's more of the style. Okay, so now I have my little seahorse outline here and I've loaded up the uh, brush I created, the insert multi-mesh brush. So we can play with some of this. A lot of options for fooling around here. So I like these little atomic symbols like these guys. So I'm gonna select this. Now I have no levels of subdivision in my model. 
I'm gonna just draw this out. Draw this out and then press W for the gizmo. You can see, I don't know if I wanna have symmetry on, so let's undo that. Turn off symmetry, Q for draw. Let's try that again and draw that out. There we go. And now I can press W for the gizmo and kind of play with its position. So I wanna have this like in the middle here. Click on the little flag icon. And it's looking like some kind of crazy atomic seahorse here. Maybe kind of apply an eye there or something. I don't know. You could have this layered so this is inset a little bit. Unicorn. So I have this selected, I'm gonna press the arrow, click up here, and just press the arrow keys. So you can kinda of use the arrow keys to kind of cycle through these. All right, so after flailing around in ZBrush for a while and coming up with a bunch of stuff that I didn't like, like this thing, and just not, it's a mess. It doesn't read as a seahorse anymore. So interesting techniques, but it's not giving me what I need. So I was really enjoying coming up with these symbols though in Illustrator. So what I decided to do is go back into Illustrator and see if I could define see if I can design the profile there and then use that and import that as an SVG and that's kind of the theme of the technique for this particular video so I went into Illustrator and I drew out kind of there's I'm not an Illustrator expert by any means but you can see I came up with this you know after messing around for like 15 20 minutes or so uh, and I kind of like it this to me reads as a seahorse but it also has that kind of mid-century Guji kind of style to it it's not quite as literal I'm not just throwing in kit bashing a bunch of symbols, but it has that kind of style that I like. It's got a little tiki quality to it. So I'll just show you, I'm, I'm in Illustrator 2022, and uh, you may or may not be familiar with the program, but I just want to show you some cool things you can do in it real quick. So what I did was I just basically took uh, the pen tool and made my curve. Actually, let's do this. Let's go in here, I'm gonna set the stroke to black and give it a, like three or four points and set the fill to nothing. Of course that's that one, but let's see. Okay, so kind of went in here and drew out my basic profile of the seahorse. I'm just doing this real quickly. Hit the enter key to finish in and then go in here and uh, play with uh, just the anchor points and smooth it out, make it look a little bit nicer. But you can see with sort of the angles that I'm getting, it's like I'm getting that kind of style really quickly. And this is kind of just a testament to sometimes making, mixing it up and using different tools so that you can break out of your comfort zone. I mean, the one thing I like about these challenges is that it forces you to break out of your comfort zone. And this is not a style that I do very often. So I'm learning a lot while doing it. So let's say I have something like that and something like that. And then I'm just gonna go in here, up the uh, path thickness to some 
like 15 or whatever. And then there's this really cool tool, um, this one, the width tool. So if I select this, what this automatically allows me to do is start to adjust the width in different parts of the, uh, the curve. So it's able, and it's like that really reads to me as like sort of mid-century, right? You get the cool kind of angles, ultra modern, still reads as a seahorse. You know, once I got a profile that I kind of liked, like this, I basically went in here and said object. Selected the uh, selected the curve, went in here and say object uh, path uh, outline stroke. And this creates a stroke that, you no, know, it's the outline. So then you have these curves in here and I just edit these things using sort of typical techniques. And you can also go in here and if it's too many points and it gets kind of difficult to work with. You can, uh, whoops, select it, select the whole thing, and then go in here and object, path, simplify, and then reduce the number of points, make it easy to work with. Once you get a shape that you like, you know the rest, you just basically select it and uh, I'll select this and choose object or sorry file uh, export selection and export out as an SVG so I did that with this this version which I like so I'm gonna go over here to poly mesh and under Z, Z plugin under Z plugin hit that new SVG I call that seahorse fittingly there we go. So, okay. So you can see that it, it, it's remembering the, I was playing with the bevel. So if you go in here and you can play with the extrusion width, but you can also play with the resolution. So when it came in originally, it looked like that. That, that looks kind of cool. I like that. But you know, up the resolution to get smoother curves if you want it. And then you can play with the bevel, the amount of the bevel, and then the curvature kind of like this negative curvature like this kind of thing that's really cool I like that and then of course you can go in here dynamesh Z remesh decimate add a post at some point if it's going to be an earring but um, for the most part that's uh, using similar techniques that we demonstrated in the other parts of this video so I hope that's given you some inspiration I actually kind of really like this earring now I'm much happier with this than the other ones I was coming up with but that's the journey all right so this was an interesting uh, little project but I'm kind of pleased with the result here so uh, we put a post on the back of it so there's now um, we need to dynamesh it together but we could set this up uh, for actual production for an earring and I really like it, even though it was kind of a torturous route to get to it. But <laughs> uh, we are joined by Tomas Vittelsbach. And together, the three of us are going to take a look at the entries for the October Challenge ZBJW, which, of course, was a Halloween challenge. Cool. All right. So, all right. So tell us about this one. First up from Julia. This is a Cthulhu earweight hanger. So heavy, heavy earrings like Tomas always wears. Ring a ding! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty freaking awesome. It's hard not to love that. Yeah, how can you not love that? And it's got some of my favorite things: tentacles, bat wings. I mean, it's great. I, I like agree. How, yep. I like how she did the uh, the tentacles, the little knobby quality. The detail came in really nicely. That's pretty cool. I like it. Love it. All I can say is don't ever wear a sweater with it or a silk shirt. <laughs> or it's going to be true Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Elder Dawes. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Think, yeah, David uh, Ross. I love a good pumpkin skull. I love, I love pumpkin. a good pumpkin skull. Did he change the teeth? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Awesome. The teeth look very pumpkin-y. Love it. Added a little guy on the back, too little little pumpkin patch on the back i like it and the eyes are open so you can get some of those tritium tubes so you can have like an orange glow on your finger when you stuff some tritium <laughs> tubes in there <laughs> nice that's really cool great job man screen is halloween i love this one miko yeah this is miko's the, the 
The little hat. Characters. I know, right? The little bellboy hat. <laughs> That's Actually, I, I showed this one to my wife, and she absolutely loved it, mainly because the hat. It just, I don't know, it's hysterical. That was a great photo. Really nice. Very nice. Hikey. Yay, I love a good spider. Spider and a fly. Yeah, little skull on him. He's adorable. It's like a death's head spider. <laughs> right? <laughs> doesn't exist. It's um, almost like that jumping spider I took a picture of recently. It has like that little white spot on it. I like yep. it. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. Hey. Hey, old guy. There we go. That's that's Vogue. Yep. I think he made a video about this ring. Look Did at he? the background. <laughs> I know, it's great. I love that he was saying that he'd never make a character ring and now he's like specializing in character rings. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Cool. I like the love like material. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool render. Yeah, putting the little background image is always a great way to right to, to sell the uh, to sell the design. Give mm, a more story. Worst perspective, he's black up front, fading back, fading back. He's got his his step back's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is Riz. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. This one, Tomas and I saw in the Monday session. And this is mm -hmm. after he'd edited it since then. Nice. Oh, cool. oh awesome. Oh. This is Paul. It pans labyrinth type deal. Yeah, that's a good one. It's nice, I like the swirlies. Yeah, Paul is really moody. good at these faces. His super moody faces. Mm -hmm. Like his brows are nice. It's a nice brow differentiation. It's good stuff. It's very trippy. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's like something you'd see coming out of the woods at you, you know? <laughs> okay, Juan. Juan, yeah, this is a nice one too. There's the back of it. Wow. Very nice. Yeah, go. we talked about this in the critique session as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like the flowers a lot. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I was thinking he could add more of like a bed of roses. Maybe he might do that underneath both skulls just mm -hmm. to, get, to make it a little bit, because just to punch up the flowers, I think. Mm -hmm. it, it feels like he's holding back a little bit, which is which is my comment. But I thought, I think it's a really cool design. Yeah, it is. He, he had to do a lot of work to fill in the undercut so it would print more easily. Mm -hmm. um, I was watching him on a on his Twitch stream when he worked on it, filling in all those undercuts and whatnot. Yeah, well, luckily with the features they showed on the new update, that should be something that goes away soon. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we right. know. I mean, you know, maybe this one we don't show. Hey, well, I don't know if I, yeah, one. it's okay. I'm just kidding. This is my, my, I actually managed to find some time to actually do one. I was like really worried that I was going to be able to do one. So this is my vampire bat wing inspired by the opening credits of what we do in the shadows. Um, I did this all in ZBrush core and I recorded a video and we're going to throw it up on our YouTube channel. So you guys can watch the techniques I used in ZBrush core to create. This. You're killing it in core. Of course, cool. I really like it. You know, it's it's uh, you can do a lot with it. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's a, a very cool tool. All right, so thanks again for joining us. Remember to like, and subscribe, and we're looking forward to seeing all the entries for this month's challenge. So remember to post your images to social media with the hashtag ZBJWNOV for November. See you next time.